So was Final Fantasy 16 snubbed for Game of the Year at this year's Game Awards? Now, I want to be the first person to say that the Game Awards are not an objective look at what the best games of this year are or any year for that matter, as crazy stacked as this year has been, and one should not allow this to diminish their enjoyment of any video game. But it's a very common trend recently to see how many people on social media are upset by Final Fantasy 16's omission for Game of the Year at the Game Awards this year. All it takes is a quick trip down to X or Twitter or Reddit to notice quite how heavy the vitriol is towards the Game Awards for not including Final Fantasy 16 and how much that decision has dominated the discussions on the Final Fantasy Circle, which is extremely interesting considering quite how much of that same vitriol was aimed at Final Fantasy 16 when it was launched for not being what people wanted it to be. So I thought why not take a look at whether I personally think it deserved to be there or not, not that my opinion is any more valuable than anybody else's of course, but why this has caused such a major division amongst so many people. Now I also want to go out on a limb and state that I very much enjoyed Final Fantasy 16 and while it's not my favourite Final Fantasy, nor my game of the year, more on that later, I absolutely think that if it is your favourite game this year, it has every right to be. There are aspects of this game that stand out extremely heavily and the fact that so many people are upset with the fact that it hasn't been mentioned or nominated for the Game Awards this year go to show so many more people resonated with this game than the vocalist who claimed that Final Fantasy 16 wasn't Final Fantasy at all would have you believe. Now reviews are a mega sticky subject because games, as the art form that I and many people claim them to be, are subjective. What I might consider to be the absolute bottom of the gaming barrel, I'm looking at you Modern Warfare 3, others consider to be the absolute height of their gaming experience, which is why I think it's important for us to showcase our opinions but never to state them as any kind of fact. So I think it's absolutely fair for Final Fantasy 16 to be as divisive as it is. So Final Fantasy 16 may not have been nominated for Game of the Year, but it was nominated for multiple other awards. So namely Best Narrative, Best Performance for Ben Starr as Clive, Best Score and Music for Masayoshi Soken, and Best Role Playing Game. Now personally, I really hope that Ben wins. Like, I really genuinely believe that his performance as Clive was outstanding. One of the best aspects of the game, and seeing him go up against the likes of Idris Elba in Cyberpunk 2077 and winning would be such a deserved and exemplary win for him, and will continue to put him on his escalating stardom in the voice acting world, and he deserves it 100%. I also think that Soken's work on the score for Final Fantasy 16 is 100% deserving of the award. Find the Flame, Away, Ascension, just a few examples of tracks that are some of the best tracks that we've seen in Final Fantasy for an extremely long time, if not ever, and therefore I believe that both Ben and Soken will win their respective awards. Best Narrative? Yeah, I'm not so sure about that one, to be honest. Final Fantasy 16's opening is one of the strongest I have ever seen in a video game. I said it when the demo came out, and I maintain that opinion to this day. However, I do think that the narrative meanders around quite a lot at the midsection and late game, having to build a ship for mid that took far too long and could have been done in a couple of cutscenes where things just felt a little bit bloated for the narrative in Final Fantasy 16 and there are certain characters that fall to the wayside really heavily in favour of characters that maybe didn't need to have as much screen time. Now don't get me wrong I like a lot of the side characters in Final Fantasy 16 but characters like Annabella, even Jill, could have gotten a lot more screen time than some of the ones that we did see. So I'm not sure that narrative, especially when going up against the likes of Baldur's Gate 3 and Cyberpunk 2077, I don't actually think that Final Fantasy 16 deserves this award. Now the fourth award, this is extremely interesting. Best role playing game. So the nominees for this are Final Fantasy 16, Baldur's Gate 3, Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. And it's Starfield's only nomination. Honestly, I'm surprised it's even in that. But I don't think Final Fantasy 16 is going to win this up against Sea of Stars or Baldur's Gate. Maybe not even Lies of P, even though I would have put Lies of P in the action adventure category and not the role playing genre. 
for the same reason as I'm not sure about Liza P being there. Final Fantasy 16 is very tenuous with its ties to the role-playing genre. Now, the big argument from a long time ago, or from when the game released, is whether it was actually a JRPG at all. And I do think that one of Final Fantasy 16's weak points is that it doesn't actually have a lot of RPG elements considering it's supposed to be an RPG game. And I know the nonsense of saying RPG game there. Role-playing game, we'll go with that instead. Because like weapons are a purely linear fashion. Upgrades, like the leveling system is completely arbitrary. The, the only real kind of customization options you have are the moves that you use, which sure, they are nice. Um, Devil May Cry does that. You wouldn't call Devil May Cry an RPG though. So I feel like the amount that one can infuse into the character makes the, stre or the, the train of thought that Final Fantasy XVI is a role-playing game rather tenuous. So it makes me wonder if Final Fantasy XVI is in this category purely for the pedigree of the Final Fantasy name. But I do think that because it has an extensive focus on story and character development, you can still call it an RPG, and it is developed by a Japanese company, so you can still call it a JRPG as well. But I think when comparing it to other games in the genre, especially Baldur's Gate, because let's face it, even though Baldur's Gate isn't my game of the year this year, it's absolutely going to run away with the awards this year, and I'd be very shocked if it didn't. I don't think that Final Fantasy XVI deserves to win this award either. One of the big things I see a lot in the arguments against Final Fantasy XVI, well, against its decision not to be nominated, is that it should be there because Resident Evil 4 shouldn't be. And I find this very interesting because I've seen a lot of people, and I even put this on my Twitter and everything, and I said, I think it's ridiculous that people think that Resident Evil 4 shouldn't be allowed to be in the Game Awards because it's a remake. And they're like, well, yes, but it should be new games only. And I'm like, see, that doesn't really make sense to me because I think that remakes are just as like viable to be commended by the panel that make up the Game Awards. Because as I know it, it's 90% decided by a jury and the, the viewer vote does account somewhat, but it's to have the jury take that into account. It's, it's exceptional to have a game like Resident Evil 4 strike lightning twice because it worked back when it first came out on the GameCube and it works just as well, if not better, again, through polish, through change and everything now in 2023 amongst all of these other amazing games. When you look at the Oscars, does The Departed not deserve to be, like, you know, best picture because it's a remake? Because The Departed is a remake. Does Mad Max Fury Road not deserve to be, like, you know, commended for being an amazing movie because it's a reboot of Mad Max? Absolutely they do. Do, do covers of songs not deserve awards because they're covers, even though the singer is still showing their, you know, their talents and stuff like that? Does art not mean anything if a drawing is put on paper because drawings have been put on paper for generations. I know that I'm probably taking this to an extreme, but my point still stands where I think that it's strange that people consider that a game like Resident Evil 4 shouldn't be on the list because it's a remake and Tears of the Kingdom shouldn't be there because it's an expansion on Breath of the Wild. Again, it's like, well, isn't a sequel to a game, just an expansion to that game if it uses all the same characters. It's, I find it a very strange argument and this is why I try not to take a lot of this objectivity when it comes to games seriously. So do I think that Final Fantasy 16 should be in the game of the year running? So let's take a look at the nominations for it. You've got Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I've only played four out of these six. I haven't yet played Spider-Man 2 and I haven't yet played Alan Wake 2, both of which are games I do want to play. Amongst this list, it's hard for me to say yes. Like, I loved FF16, I did, and there's a lot of things I really like about it. The characters are great, the combat felt really good up until the end of the game where everything just became too easy. And I do think that the boss fights were genuinely fantastic. The icon fights were a real spectacle. And I think that captured Final Fantasy's essence really well in terms of spectacle. And I think the arguments that Final Fantasy 16 isn't a Final Fantasy are ridiculous. It's got the words final and fantasy on it. I, as much as it's not what people expect, they're trying to go for a new audience. And I think they swung big and I will always applaud them for trying something new. That being said, 
No, I don't think it does. And I, I hate to say it. I think it deserves to be nominated for the awards that it has got. Like, even Best Narrative, I don't... I don't think it should win, but I think it should absolutely be nominated. I just think that Final Fantasy 16 had a bit of an identity crisis. Like, it was too slow paced for a game that was very action heavy like a Devil May Cry because the action would often get stunted to a halt. There were big gaps in between new abilities that you would acquire, but when you got them, you felt powerful. But when I look at things like Tears of the Kingdom or Resident Evil 4 or Baldur's Gate, like even though Baldur's Gate 3 isn't my kind of game, I don't really get into SRPGs very much or CRPGs, however you call them, I forget. But even I can turn around and say this game is is pretty spectacular. Like, And as much as the, the cult of Baldur's Gate 3 is quite scary, it, it is an exemplary game. And I'm quite pleased to see Mario Bros. Wonder there because I'm really happy that old school doesn't mean bad. Like, And I think that this is a lesson that Final Fantasy actually could do to learn from. Like Super Mario Bros. Wonder distills the original sort of Super Mario experience and loads of people and reviews that I've watched say that it harkens back to like Super Mario World and what they loved from that. So I think it's really nice to see that old school doesn't equal bad. And honestly, the same applies to Resident Evil 4. And you know, I, I'm glad that video games can be video games and not feel like they have to be 25 other things all at once. They can just refine and polish and just make the best experience from the experience that they've had from previous entries in the franchise, which is what Final Fantasy 16 largely did not do. Do I think that it's a bad game? No, absolutely not. I actually really enjoyed my way through it. What's my game of the year this year? Mine probably is Resident Evil 4. As much as I hate to like, you know, I'm sure it's gonna set people off. I think it actually is Resident Evil 4. And if it's not that, it's Tears of the Kingdom, which are the two that it feels like people are gonna get angry at me for saying, because they're expansions, they're remakes, they don't deserve it. And I'm like, okay. But you know, Spider-Man 2 has New York as its map, and that's the same map as Spider-Man 1. So while I think that Final Fantasy 16 absolutely deserves the nominations it did get, am I mad that it didn't get nominated for Game of the Year? No, not really. So that's it for today's video. That being said, even though I don't think FF16 necessarily deserved Game of the Year this year, had it been any other year, I think it would have easily gotten in there. This year was just extremely tight because so many amazing games came out. I tell you what, I won a game I am absolutely shocked that wasn't even mentioned in the Game Awards was Octopath Traveler 2. I loved that game and Star Ocean Second Story R. Both of those games should have at least gotten a mention somewhere. And I actually kind of prefer both of them to FF16, and but they're still Square Enix RPGs and I still love them. And if DLC does come out for FF16, which it does look like it's going to do, I'm absolutely going to play it and I'll be really excited for it. So let's not get it twisted and make like Joe hates FF16, because I don't. I actually really love it. Hey, let me know in the comments below what you think of this. And I'm particularly curious to see what everyone's thoughts are on the other games in the list, as well as Final Fantasy 16. So let me know in the comments below with that. And if you're not sure what to comment, just type the word algorithm because it helps me out a great deal. And don't forget to smash that like button. As much as it's something that YouTubers hate to talk about, it does help us in the long run. So thank you all very much for watching. If you'd like to, help the channel out and support the channel you could feel free to click on my patreon link in the description box below and join all of the lovely people that are in the list as you can see on the screen right here and we, we do i'm doing a lot of work to try and get my artwork involved in my patreon as well so stay tuned for that as well but that's all going to be it from me so thank you again and i will see you next time take care beautiful have a good day